Stacy Peralta at Upland. Uh, green cryptos. And I know there's a few others. Darren Ho in Hawaii with the blue cryptos. Uh, this was uh, Uluwatu, I believe, was the name of this one. Uh, bank in uh, on Oahu, Big Island. But there's another photo I was looking for here. Oh, pineapple here, Doug Saladino. Real King Glare there. Um, anyway, he had the green cryptos, which what most people were skating with the uh, skate parks. But um, I took a pretty healthy slam here. I always put myself in the line of fire for the best shots. And in this case, uh, Doug slammed straight into my camera and my head a split second after I captured this, but almost looks like a crypto ad here. But Doug, being a GNS writer, of course he wouldn't have been on the, the uh, crypto team because they, the GNS team would have expected them to be riding uh, yo-yo wheels or, or one of those wheels. Uh, here's one, uh, never got published just because it involves underage skaters drinking beer. This guy owned, uh, he was a distributor for Heineken, but uh, Steve was ri riding one of the early uh, crypto uh, foam boards here. And I don't know about the wheels, but the, the foam boards were really popular at the time. But anyway, this guy was a distributor for crypto and he had drained the pool to repaint the crypto logo, uh, or excuse me, the Heineken logo on the bottom of the pool and agreed to let us skate it. Well, he brought out a couple of cases. This guy's kind of crazy with kids, but couple of cases of beers and you know everybody's pretty plastered here but needless to say uh, this never got in the magazine for obvious reasons. Yeah, uh, Doug Saladino, he was writing cryptos here, which he wasn't supposed to be, but uh, so that created a bit. And then same thing here, my first cover, Dennis Martinez's Spring Valley Skate Park on Kryptonics. This was uh, early 1978. As you can see, Town & Country was the big popular um, product or surf shop. Yeah, main stories. Well, you know, I walked away from skateboarding in 86, and uh, I didn't know skateboarding was really going to survive. Or I, Well, I knew it would always be around, but I didn't know where it would be as an industry as a whole. And I was out of it until about the year 2000 when... Uh, the old school stuff came back, and next thing you know, I'm getting all these phone calls and emails and, and requests for photos. Everybody's going crazy. So all this stuff, I never thought it had any values, like my old crypto wheels or something. I, you know, a lot of stuff I gave away because I, I thought, well, I'm probably not going to ever use this again. And, and uh, I mean, people were paying thousands of dollars for stuff that, that I was giving away. So, I mean, that was a, a bit of a surprise. But I mean, I'm stoked to see it. But I always sort of considered myself as a dinosaur out to pasture, you know, just like the Dog Towners and Stacy and, you know, the rest of all my other old skate friends. And uh, never imagined it coming back like it did. And then to have crypto come back like this to me is a great full circle kind of a thing.